All right. Welcome back. Luke Thomas Show, 877-FIGHT-93, 877-344-4893. So I made a point earlier. There's an argument to be made, at least in terms of the ratings. The organizations that you think are the biggest ones, there might be some bigger ones. Joining us now in studio is the promoter of one of those leagues, organizations that is doing huge things. And I'm convinced not getting some of the credit that they deserve for it. It's Combate Americas. They're doing a bunch of stuff. And their CEO, co-creator of the UFC, Campbell McLaren is here. Hi, Campbell. How are you? Hey, Luke. Thanks for having me back. Delighted to be here. I disagree with you already, though. Why? I got to say. Because there's no argument. Look at the ratings. The ratings are good. So for folks who don't know, let's start there, by the way. Yeah, but start with arguing. That's, yeah, uh, that's a arguing. good start. By the way, we, my producer played uh, South American <laughs> rock music there. I know you guys are going to Peru. We'll talk about that in a second. Um, for folks who may not know... You guys are on Univision here in the United States. And DAZN. And DAZN, right. So what are the ratings like on Univision for folks who may not be familiar with these facts? Well, I mean, we're, we're hitting numbers like 500,000 at midnight. I saw six not, not too yeah, long ago. Yeah, and well, I'll tell you, what's odd is uh, uh, from the last show, we had 300,000. We do a separate show, an after party. So we're on from midnight till 1.30, and okay. we've added this other show called Combate Extra, it's like our after party. You okay. get invited to the after party. So what happens on that one? Three hundred thousand people watch that. Now last what is week. that show? It's fights that don't make it to live air okay. that we think should be seen by people. So like the prelims. Yeah, it, it, it could be the prelims. It could be after, but we pick special fights for the Univision live broadcast, right? Because I think Univision is a lot of new fans to the sport, and we have a lot of research showing this is fans that have heard of MMA, maybe have seen, maybe have seen the UFC, probably not, are interested, but are not regular MMA fans yet. So what we do is we, we sort of handpick fights for them to see, right? It's mm -hmm. like an introductory uh, to MMA. And then what we do is we put on uh, a, a different set at our after show. But let's come back. Look, 500,000 people at midnight. Uh, I mean, that's remarkable. It's pretty good, Just man. Just as a TV number alone. What is right? Univision telling you? Like, they must be thrilled. Oh, they love me so much. Yeah. They, they have deep <laughs> love for me. We're actually, I can't announce it here. I'm, I'm looking at Yeah, thanks for coming on and not announcing things. <laughs> yeah, we thanks, can't Campbell. announce it here, but we're going to do the biggest broadcast uh, TV deal in the history of MMA. We will be on Televis uh, channel Canal Senko, which is Channel 5 in Mexico. Which is, biggest, by the way, folks have been on a huge channel. Huge channel. And then Univision here. So we're broadcast, which means free to air, which means you don't have to pay for it. This is the biggest broadcast TV deal in the history of MMA. So how does it work with the zone? Do they, is it like- They're English. That would be the English language. That's the, is that the Bretos, Gilbert Melendez, Juliana Pena broadcast? Yes, only uh, uh, Gil, because he's gotten tied up with other stuff, has been replaced by this amateur guy we brought in. But okay. he's doing well. Okay. The amateur's good. All right. So it's, it's me. I've, I've been talking to Max this week, by the yeah, way. We're yeah, going to get him yeah. on the show here. We'll talk about Oh, Kobachi. you should. That's great. He's That's... great. So, okay, so you guys are out there killing it. Um, why don't you think this is a bigger story in the MMA media? Uh, look, I've been uh, told to stop saying racism. Uh so I'm not going to say racism. I'll say cultural bias. I think a lot of people don't realize outside of the hardcore regular MMA fans that there are people out there who still don't know about MMA. If you look at the average age of the UFC's TV audience, it's 47 years old. I mean, the sport's 26 years old now. Our average age is 27. So I think what's happening, it's a whole new group of people. And the purists and those people that love the sport that I help create are very dedicated and very true to the sport, but they're not allowing for the fact that there's another group of folks that are coming into this. Why is it there, there are these generational turnovers in fandom? What well, you've seen that in other sports. I mean, I think I think the NBA has been very good. I have seen that, but it's, like, it's always like, um, you know, parent to a kid. So you sort of get it. But this one doesn't feel led quite by the hand. It's a little bit different. Now, well, it's not. Well, for, for, for one, we've switched off audiences, right? Because I've focused on a Hispanic audience. We're not trying to exclude anyone. But when, you know, when I went to, you know, I went to Lorenzo Fatita and Dana White five years ago now this summer with this idea because I wanted to tell them about it because I love the UFC. And when I talked to Dana, Lorenzo was the former owner. Dana right. is Dana. Uh, you know, when I told him about it, Lorenzo goes, "We've you're not taking anything away from us. We've never had a lot of Hispanic fans. So why is that? And I think the reason for that is a sports reason. I think that 
the UFC and most MMA is a grappling based sport where the the athletes learn to strike. They have they come in with a and and, and look everybody's talking about this new wrestler that uh, is going to go to the Olympics in twenty twenty. Oh, Jordan yeah, that Jordan just threw you know my my friend Ben Askren all over the place. Yeah. So it's essentially athletes like that that learn to strike. My guys and girls are the opposite. They're strikers that are learning how to grapple. And I think that's a big difference in the sport. And what it does is that we say mucho más acción. MMA for us means much more action because we tend to favor strikers that use their grappling skills defensively. So they don't want to be taken down. They want to stand up and bang. What happens when the skills even out, which they will? What happens when the skills even out? I think that you're always in – you're always – you're you're always matchmaking. You're uh, and styles make fights, right? Also, they so can, you're they can, always doing as that. the skill sets mature. Isn't it possible if the audience continues to be what it is or it continues to grow? Could be that their tastes mature over time in conjunction with the sports change. It's you mean possible. will they go to a more grappling based? Uh, is that do you think? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You know I like you. Yeah. But I think you just offended me. All right. So. <laughs> Um, you think grappling based MMA fans are some way higher level fans than those that like, uh, just banging? Yes. Why? Because there's nothing wrong with just liking fighters who bang it out. And in fact, you get in today's MMA, we were talking about Jose Aldo and Alexander Volkanovsky, right? And he got passed over by Frankie Edgar. But if you go and you watch Volkanovsky, he didn't put Aldo on his ass, but it's this incredibly high level of striking. Like striking is just a bigger part of MMA. It's just a fact. They start on the feet. Right. And every round starts on the feet. But the reality is, if you know anything about wrestling, you are automatically signaling that there is a level of technique that uh, technique threshold that is important to you. That is a barrier to entry to people who just like banging. Mm, spoken like an MMA expert. <laughs> let me let me tell you. Here's here's what I think. The Gracie's. Uh, you know, Horian, one of the reasons Horian left the UFC is he said, once you put time limits in, it's no longer a real fight and grappling no longer has an advantage. You know, Horian and the Gracies believe it's not mixed martial arts. It's Gracie jiu-jitsu. Right. Right. 100%. So, it, so he has a point. If I had a TV show that lasted 70 hours, you could do Gracie jiu-jitsu all exactly you wanted, right. right? Yes. So there's limits to what we look at and how we present the sport. And if that's an agreeable fact, because I don't want to watch 70 hours Who does? of Gracie jiu-jitsu. Love. Horian, I love you. I just heard from your daughter, Rose. Yeah. She's fantastic. I love her. I love Hard to sell love advertising you. against Hard that. Hard to sell advertising. So you've got to put some constraints on it. So why, if the, the original idea of the first UFC was to do what is the best style in a real fight. That was the idea, right? Okay, so that's gone. So why can't we have a type of organization that emphasizes a type of MMA? Oh, no, I have no problem with that. In fact, jiu-jitsu is kind of like that. So, for example, I live in Washington, D.C. There's a uh, Richmond base. Well, if it's Richmond base, but they do a lot of events there. It's called U.S. Grappling. And so you might know of, like, IBJJF. That's the points. That's where if someone wins the Mundials, that's the big deal, right? U.S. Grappling is just a separate uh, thing. Their rule is no time limit. Just no time limit. It's hard to watch at times, but if you're a competitor, it can be kind of fun. But then you have IBJJF, which is points. Then you have EBI, which is its own set of things. Like having these different rule sets brings out different kinds of competitors, brings out different kinds of audiences. I'm all in favor of it. And you guys clearly have a working formula here. Well, my audience is agreeing with you, by the way, because yeah. I do think they're new to the sport. And I do think one of the things I you know, told the commentators, don't say RNC. Because like people we're are going to choke. Yeah, because people are going to think it's the Republican National Committee, and that scares a lot of my fans. <laughs> so we, I'm not presuming any knowledge yeah. for Combate fans. Come enjoy it. But I'll tell you what I have seen, and we had a, our last event. I saw the grappling is becoming more important in Combate. And we saw a number of people, uh, Amanda Serrano, who's uh, uh, a woman's champion boxer that's yep. been doing uh, some fighting for us. She won on a submission on her last fight for right. us. So it's not that Combate doesn't do it. I think people prefer to stand and bang. My athletes do. I also think we've got Super Melly, who's one of our most popular fighters. She's 6 and zero. Oh. She's got, I think, five knockouts head kicks and one knockout liver kick. She's a Muay Thai 
uh, 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 trained athlete. So she wants to come in and do the Muay Thai, and her ability to stop takedowns has gotten very advanced. So if you see grappling as defensive and that your main skill set is striking, that's what combate is about. And also, like, if what you're telling me is true, and I believe it, which is that you have this sort of newer audience that's still learning about this, the reality is a striker-friendly, let's call it that, organization is a much better gateway to long-term fandom than a heavily wrestling-based organization. Now, Even I, I could admit that. I, I think that's right. And it's not a knock on Odeon Gracie right. or, or, or Ben Askren or anyone or... Uh, George St. Pierre, right? I mean, GSP is right. a great grappler, right. right? I mean, a great grappler. So I'm not knocking anyone like that, but I'm saying that we have a type of fighter that is emphasizing the stand up. However, if you don't guard against the takedown and don't know how to get out if you're taken down, you're never going to rise to any level in any organization. So I think it's like Hoist Gracie said to me, he goes, Your guys will have to win using their strengths. But they'll have to know enough to not have a grappler take them apart. So when you think about like growth, and I want to talk about your May event in Peru. I'm super excited about Peru. that. Peru. It's crazy, yeah. right? So here's the deal, though. When you think about your organization, the ratings are already pretty good, right? If not great. Are the you... ratings are great. I mean, truly, by, great. not just the promoter saying that. By TV standards, a half a million people at midnight is a great rating. I, I wouldn't argue with you. Are you trying to get to a point where you can say we have some of the very best fighters per weight class in the world? Or are you trying to get at scale a product you can deliver to a lot of different television entities? Man, that's a great question. That's it's, why I asked it. it. No, it's a great, it's a combination. Well, it's the latter now. Okay. But I'll tell you, uh, uh, strengths are weaknesses, right? And a weakness we had in starting Combate is I would say the best fighters in the world, with some exceptions, have been signed to the UFC. Right. And Ben Askren used to be one of the exceptions. Yep. Right. So I can't go up against and, and Bellator's made, uh, 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 you know, great progress in taking folks that have either fallen out of that or aged out of that or got tired of that or whatever. So uh, there's that group there. The only option I had to find quality athletes was to go younger. And I think what that does, one, it, it gives me a more aggressive type fighter because they're younger in their career. They're less worried about injuries. They're more able to put themselves out in spectacular fights. But the other thing is, as they mature and get experienced, I think I'm looking at the athletes that are going to dominate the sport in three to five years. You know, so I've invested in the future of mm. MMA, right? My audience is the future of MMA. There's no argument about that. It's younger. It's growing. I own the audience of the future. I believe through the work Michael Framowitz and Eduardo Vargas are doing, I believe we will own the best athletes in the next three to five years. All right. I want to talk about the next big event, May 31st in Lima, Peru, which I cannot wait for. You can stick around for another segment, right? Uh, you can. I'll stay until you throw me out. All right. Very good. Literally. We, we will evict you later. And, and I got, I've been thrown out of a lot of places, a lot of states. We will evict you later. But for now, we come back with Campbell McLaren, CEO of Combate Americas. Luke Thomas Show. Don't go anywhere. Here, the best of MLS. By the way, do you know this band? Let's test your South American knowledge. Who is this? If you don't know, just say you don't uh, no, know, no. Campbell. Stop fronting. Mena. No. Soda Stereo from Argentina. Didn't know them. Not big on Argentinian rock and roll. They are They are the U2 of uh, Spanish rock. That's the highest level is Soda Stereo. All right. Here, the best of MLS on Sirius XMFC. Early MVP candidate Carlos Vela. Le uh, leads high-flying LAFC, which, by the way, Max Bretos is the commentator for, against FC Dallas. Coverage kicks off tonight at 10 Eastern on Sirius XM FC 157 and streaming on your phone or at home on Sirius XM uh, connected devices and speakers. How did you get connected with Max, by the way? Uh, listen, le I, I hope this doesn't cost you any money, but, you know, our ratings uh, are sometimes uh, double MLS's ratings. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. Okay, well, let's talk about Max Bretos. How did you, how did you get him? Uh, Max was recommended to me. It might even been uh, Afro Mike uh, that found him, and I know he did the uh, LAFC stuff, and I think LAFC's killing it. I yes. think they've got a great brand. They're selling tickets before they even had a team. I mean, it was fantastic. And he's got a great attitude. And what we're trying to do with Juliana Pena and Max is have folks that are Hispanic but obviously are English-dominant, right? <laughs> 
So they understand Hispanic culture. They understand Hispanic words because we say things like la jaula. La jaula is just a great word. It means the cage. I just love la jaula. Uh, and uh, Max is good. He represents the culture well. He knows every sport. He's a big soccer fan. Yep. Right. Uh, he loves boxing, and he was just perfect to do it. Yeah, he's a great call. You know, and, and has experience broadcasting at the highest level as Absolutely. well. Absolutely. Right. So hey, that's the DAZN show, by the way, which is in English. And for your listeners, look, if you're put off by Univision, you shouldn't be because it's fun to listen in Spanish. Oh, it's fun. It's amazing to listen but, to it. But check out the zone. I've been putting out my cell number on the air You're and like- asking people to text me what they think. And I'm getting some. I got one really rude come on. I mean, it was really not right. I can believe that. I mean, that was really wrong. You're like but- Mike Jones, the rapper. Two eight one three three zero eight zero zero four. Listen, that's how I met Horian. I answered the phone. Yeah. That's how I met Horian. I'll funny. never forget that. All right, so let's talk about this because I find this fascinating because the UFC, when they go to South America, they've been to Argentina, they've been to Brazil, they may have been to some other Chile. Place. They've been to Chile at one time, but just Santiago, there's a lot of underserved markets there. Uh, Medellin, Colombia has not been touched. Uh, I want to go to Medellin. Montevideo so has not been touched. You're going to Lima, Peru. Lima, Peru might be the best food in all of South America, number one. Number two, it's got like 10 or 12 million people there. But of all the places to go, why Lima? Well, we actually saw a huge MMA. They have old Inca FC used to exist there. Yes, exactly. Uh, at, you know, and again, you know, Sangra Azteca, Sangra Inca. You know, there's this warrior blood mentality in a lot of the South American, and obviously in Mexico. Mexico's not in South America, by the way. It's North America. Mexico's America's with us here North in America, North America. That's right, our North American friends. Right, so uh, South America. So we saw this huge activity level in Chile and, and Peru. And um, we had uh, last year's Copa Combate. There was this national debate in Peru on the two big papers. And by the way, in a lot of South American countries in Mexico, they still have something called newspapers. Yes, they do. Uh, actual They're culturally relevant, too. Papers. Mm-hmm. And so the two big papers started arguing that Combate had picked the wrong guy to represent Peru in the Copa. Huh. And we saw that. We went, whoa, these folks are fired up. So uh, Eduardo Vargas down there on Scout trips, uh, Stan Jakobowicz uh, down there, Nicholas Ortega's our man on the ground there. Uh, we just saw this great scene, great athletes. Of course, folks, smaller than a lot of the UFC <laughs> fighters, right? I mean, yeah. 125, 135, 145, that's really what it is. Um, back to your question. I, You know, I think our 125s are, are the best in the world, right? And UFC dismantled the 125s, yeah. essentially. And I think our 135s are getting there, too. But so, if you like small, fast action, at Peru's your place. Interesting. Now, it's one of the hurdles to the Spanish-speaking markets is obviously, one, they're still developing a roster of people from there. Mm-hmm. Also, it's elevation. Now, not so much with Lima, but there's, no, a, num- sea level. <laughs> there's a number of cities yeah. where that's a real concern, including, but not limited to, Mexico City. How much is elevation a little bit of a factor in terms of difficulty for promoting? Well, it's it's definitely a factor. I don't know if it's it's a factor. Uh, we are, I can't announce yet, but we're going to Harris Tahoe in August. Okay. So, which is, I think... Um, 7,600? I mean, it's like That's a high. real elevation, That's right? High. And I can't talk about it, but we're really looking forward to being at Harris Tahoe. And I think we're going to have to look at this. We experimented with five-minute fights as a format. The whole joint is five minutes. Five minutes. And there's in my in my company, there's a huge debate. You know, my fight guys, Michael Framowitz and Eduardo Vargas. Eduardo is Gil Melendez's cousin, grew up in the fight business. Michael Framowitz, of course, is legendary Afro Mike. Started Strike Force with some guy named Scott something. Yeah. And then helped launch Invicta, uh, World Series of Fight, you know, before everybody went to prison. That was Mike. So <laughs> this guy knows more about the, 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 the fight game than anyone. And in my own group, we debate whether five-minute fight is a good thing or not. And the purists don't like it. Some guys need that second round to come to. Some mm-hmm. guys need the first round to sort of figure out their opponent. You don't get that with a five-minute round. I did a show uh, eight, nine years ago called The Iron Ring that annoyed the shit. Oh, is that all right? Sell that radio. Yeah, right. You're good. I'm good. Yeah. Um, I really annoyed the purists because I gave rappers teams MMA fights. I remember this distinctly. Yeah. yeah. And we did the five-minute format in that. And it's, you know, it's win or go home. And it's kind of interesting. Um, so I'm thinking, is that is that a good format for Altitude? You know, five minutes. Let me tell you this. I don't know what the answer is, but I will. I, I have said this on this show. These producers will back me up. One of the things I hate about MMA is that we have entrenched 
the rule set and the updating of the rule set with government entities. Whereas in the Asian promotions, they can kind of make up their own rules, more or less, not always, but for the most part. And you could say it's a bad thing, but here's the problem. There's not enough innovation in MMA, and when the innovation happens, it's uneven. We need more promoters willing to take risks. Is a five-minute fight the right answer? I don't know, but a promoter who's willing to try is the right answer. Listen, uh, you're really smart guy. I really like Yeah, no yeah, shit, but, man. But... But I disagree with everything you said. Okay, well. I don't think it's the rules. I think it's the fans and the promoters. Hidebound. When I was doing the UFC, by UFC 5, people were contacting me and going, you're a moron. Why did you do it this way? We were making it up as we went along. And people by UFC 5 thought we shouldn't be changing things. I think that sports fanatics, and I mean fanatics, they hate change more than the Catholic Church does. Everybody they, says that. I don't believe it. Every year, the NFL, for example, the NFL is, uh, changes all kinds of rules about where to kick it off and where the goalposts should be. They be narrow, should they be wider? Whether you should beat your wife or not. That's exactly right. All kinds of things. What, what, what they want to punish you for, what they don't. But they have a certain degree of latitude. And on talk radio, everyone's like, I hate this, I hate this. Show me evidence that they hate this. Show me evidence from the ratings last year, aside from the TV decline more generally, that there is any evidence that people are checking out of the NFL product because Goodell wants to innovate with the rules. You can't tell me right now, sitting across this chair, Campbell McLaren, that we we figured out the best rule set for MMA. We have not. No, we no, have no. not. But that's not what we're arguing about. I'm going to tap because you're right. Actually, it's a vocal minority of people on Twitter that represent. Twitter is ruining you, Campbell. <laughs> we were talking during the break. He's like, I just get, I get so angry on Twitter. I took Twitter off my phone. Yeah, I think I'm going to do that. You got to uh, do it. No, I. You know, I. That's a really good point. I, I, I don't know if it really is the fans doing that. I think it's a group of vocal fans that are leading the charge to not change things. I'm a baseball fan, and when they talk about raising or, or lowering you know, the mound, like that drives folks crazy. Yeah. Um, but anyway, that, what I would like to do is continue to innovate, yes. but within the rules. And I think the five-minute round, five, one five-minute round is an interesting thing. I'm not sure it's the answer either. When we tried it, it was okay. When I did it on the Iron Ring, it was great. When Combate did it, it was just okay. But I think that, and it's a, that's an amateur format right five minute one five minute round is the amateur I'm not sure format the amateur for a lot of states. you might be you might be right because i did it in georgia and we've done it in california so i think we do need to continue to innovate and you know i went to a championship fight of three rounds and a lot of that came i sat and i watched connor uh fight uh floyd mm -hmm. with my 16 year old and it was we were like on round six and he's like this is a good kid smart kid long attention span and he goes Dad, how long are boxing matches? I go, 12 rounds. He goes, who can watch for 12 rounds? I don't, and they used to be 15. Yes, of course. But <laughs> they're not. Yeah. that's because the promoters wanted their money's worth out of the fight. Yeah. And also but, people were dying. But. Yes, yes. So I think that we got to continue to innovate. And that's what really Combate is about. It's three-round championship fights. It's one five-minute round. It's finding new and young athletes and trying to figure out how to match them up in unique ways. I want to be... The avant-garde. I want to be the proactive group in, 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 in this sport because our fans are new. They're not worried about how it used to be. So you know? I'm assuming that the majority of your fans and fighters are like Chicano Americans and or Mexicans, right? So what is the South American plan? Lima's an interesting first flag uh, in the ground, but like there's no one who's really said... I want to develop talent in Spanish-speaking South America. Some people have said I want to take advantage of what's there. I haven't seen like a push to mature it. You know, again, that's a really that's a really strong distinction. Um, I'll point out that our top three markets are U.S., Mexico, Spain. Those are the three biggest. Spain. Spain. Those are the really? three biggest Spanish-speaking countries in the world. Hmm. You know, and we're looking at. We're proud. I can't announce it yet, but we're going to Madrid. Oh, so, my favorite city in the world. Madrid is awesome. It is my favorite city in the but world. But Barcelona isn't bad either. Barcelona's but, great. It's a great city. They got a bullshit soccer team, but other than that, they're fine. Oh, man, that's harsh. Well, that's facts. It's, facts. This, this year, that is true. Um, I'm a Madrid fan. Yeah. I'm not a Barca fan, but, I'm a that, but that's harsh. Hard, hard, that's hard, harsh. Hardcore Madrid fan. Harsh. In any event, yeah, I, they, I, they, I'm surprised they to hear that Spain is... Handed to yeah, well, it's a bad down season, but I'm surprised to hear that Spain is so big. Well, we have a young woman uh, named Irene Cabrera who blows up for us on social media. And I've compared her to Paige Van Sant hmm. because she's that super cute. Let me see. Irene Cabrera. Super cute. And she's actually a very good... Well, we're trying to find out if she's a great fighter or a very good fighter. And she's... That's where we are. And she's... She's uh, from Spain. She's from Spain. 
trying to see here. Is she an actor? No. Her last name is Cabrera? Yeah. I'm not sure I'll look at the right one. I'll find another one here in a minute, but in any event. Yeah, Michael Frown She's done. He's she's done well for you guys? Too. She's done spectacularly well on social media. She's really leading the charge for us in Spain. Because it's funny. I would say the South American MMA scene is more developed than the Spanish scene. I would say that as well, from what I have seen uh, traveling it's to all a, these places. It's a lot of journeyman fighters, and there's a lot of events in Tenerife and the Canary Islands. Ay, oh, man. Did you botch it? Well, it's because her last name's it's, Rivera. This, the, the Spanish thing with your mother's name. You did, in fact, name. botch it. It's yes. Irene Cabello. Cabello. His Spanish Rivera. is better than mine, which is embarrassing. Ah, what the fuck? Called La Nina. She's cute, right? She is uh, She is definitely not ugly. That is... <laughs> I have to be careful with what I say because if I say she is, then everyone's going to call me a dirtbag. Do you see the comparison to Paige Van Zandt? Yeah, certainly I can. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Although the, the, Spanish, the Spanish they speak over there is a little bit, it tilts me. Nevertheless. Ah, uh, spoken like uh, someone so, that's married to a Colombian. Right, exactly. Everybody loves the Colombian Spanish, though. They say it's the mm -hmm. purest kind. These idiots don't believe me, but everyone says that. No, I, I hear that all the time. And certainly the all the Spanish TV networks I work with say that. So where is Combate in like five years? What's the five-year, give me the five-year plan. Um... Our goal is to be the number two sport for Hispanics worldwide behind soccer, and we're we're almost there now. Mm. I think I think in five years we're we're a two billion dollar company. I think we're reaching twenty one countries and being the dominant sport right behind soccer. Uh, in Mexico now, our ratings are better than half of Liga MX, which is Mexican soccer. Yeah. So we're already beating half the teams in Mexico. We're beating MLS. That is amazing. You know, it's re in Spain. We're on the same network as both Bellator and the UFC, and it's sometimes we double the UFC's ratings in Spain. So it's it's literally it's phenomenal. You know what's so funny? We just had this event for the UFC in uh, Brazil. Yes, and uh, I made this point. I'm not like if you go to a country and the fans are the way they are, you're not going to talk them out of it. You just kind of have to accept it on some level. But. People have been like, oh, my God, the Brazilians are such great fans. And I'm like, well, that's true if you're a Brazilian. If you're Brazilian. They're, yeah. na they're nationalists. But it sounds like what you're telling me is Hispanics have a degree, uh, and again, I'm not judging it, but they have a degree of solidarity about their sporting influences and what they like. Uh, uh, look, Culturally, you racially. You mentioned Barcelona and Madrid. Latino's, Latino's not a race, but okay. Yeah, but you, you, there's a lot of people that are really support the home team, right? Boston fans are definitely like yes. that, right? Racists. <laughs> Uh, we go to Monterrey, Mexico a lot. It's our top market, and it's the second biggest city in Mexico. And what I've seen is we do Monterrey versus everybody. And uh, we have local fighters and guys that are on their way up, and it's, Monterrey is always well represented. And I have seen a number of times, if somebody is beating the crap out of the Monterrey fighter, the crowd will switch to the fighter that's putting more into it. Monterrey is, I think, maybe the best fight town in the world. Hmm. They... They went, you know, uh, 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 what is it, uh, lost the fight, won the night. You know, they have right. that mentality. Right. Like, if you put on a show and you go for it, we love you. And I love doing events in Monterey. It's absolutely fantastic. Guadalajara is like that a little bit. I'm, I'm trying to think. You know, we saw a little bit of that in San Antonio. So I think it's more than just representing your uh, cultural heritage or your national flag. It's, we say, fight like a Mexican, you know, and it means put your heart into it. Stand toe-to-toe -to -toe and go for it. And we have found, regardless of where we are, if you fight like that, you will win the crowd over. It's hard not to. If folks want more information about Combate, obviously I'm a DAZN customer. I want to hear the Bretos call with Juliana Pena. But give folks the rundown. What are, what are ways we can access? And I, I, thought, I, I saw you guys put the, uh, the Reina show on um, YouTube, the whole thing. Yeah, we're at, show. At, obviously YouTube is easy to find. We're also on Pluto TV, so you see our library on Pluto TV. Combate is easy to find. Listen, here's how you spell Combate Americas. It's combat with an E on combat the end. Combat with an E. And America with an S on the end. Because I wanted to point out there really is more than one America. We call ourselves America. So funny. But the rest of the world calls us the States yes. or the U.S. E-E-U-U -E -U -U is how they spell it in Spanish. E-U-U. -E yeah. And then, of course, you know, I'm British, I'm Scottish, so I'm a Yank. When I go home, yeah. whether I'm a Yankee fan or a Red Sox fan, I'm a Yank. So it's Combate Americas. It's combat with an E on the end. It's America with an S on the end. It means the fighting Americas. And all you got to do is Google it. We're on TV. No matter what. 
television you have, you can watch on Univision. Because even if you have the basic of basicest cable, yep. Univision is on that. Because it's a broadcast network. So yep. that means free over-the-air TV. The Zone, it's 100 bucks a year. Come on. If you don't make 100 bucks, you should move to Mexico because you're underemployed. <laughs> All right? It's 100 bucks a year. You hear that, KOB? He's talking so, to you. So 100 bucks a year. Uh, if you work at Sirius FM, uh, I guess uh, that's a different thing. If you work at Sirius FM t- Radio, TV. apparently that's uh, at, at Sirius XM. Uh, so it's on DAZN in English. It's in Univision in Spanish, but that's free to air. Uh, YouTube. You've heard of YouTube. Yep. You can find us on YouTube. Our website is Combate Americas. Combat with an E on the end, America with an S on the end. If you're in Mexico, we're on the biggest TV network in the country, and we're also on Televisa Deportes Network in the slot the UFC used to have. All right. So this is the last story. Spain, go, go. If you're in Spain, go. So So it's easy to find. It's very easy to find. You know what's funny? So you mentioned the Americas thing. I remember the first time I went to Colombia, and I was meeting my in-laws for the first time. And uh, some came up for the wedding, but there was a whole bunch of I didn't meet. So we go down there, and uh, some of them speak English very well. Some of them don't. Some not at all. But the ones who spoke just a little bit were like, uh, you know what we have in common? And I was like, what? And they go, we're both Americans. I'm like, no, no, no. See, I'm American. <laughs> exactly. And they, like, and they got real bitter at me. And they're like, no, no, no. We're all Americans. And I'm like, really? Because I'm looking down the streets of Bogota. I don't see any Bank of America branches down here, Dingleberries. It's just in Los Estados Unidos. But It's a bank of cartel. Well, no longer. That's all cleaned up. Listen, to everybody listening, let me, let me put this out. I know I'm an immigrant. I know I'm biased towards immigrants. There's a whole bunch of motherfuckers in the world that don't like us. But the group of Americans throughout South America, they like us. They're our pals. We could do a lot worse than team up and, and take care of our Mexican neighbor. I hate the fucking Canadians. But the Mexicans, they're our brothers. They're our cousins. Venezuela and Colombia, you know, it was one country. Yes, it was Gran Colombia. It was time. big Colombia. Yes, yeah. That was a big country. All right, we got to go. If you want more information, you know where to get it now. Good luck with the May 31st show in Lima, Peru. Campbell thank McLaren, you. always nice to hang My out with you. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Luke Thomas Show, coming right back. Thank you guys so much for watching the video. Subscribe to the channel. There's other videos you can watch right here. If you've never heard my Sirius XM radio show, there's a link in the description box below. You can try it for free for 30 days. The Luke Thomas Show airs weekdays, 3 to 6 p.m. Eastern on Sirius XM Fight Nation, channel 93. Catch you all next time.